Nowadays we have more ways to communicate than ever. Apart from good old-fashioned vocal cords, emails are the most common form of communication with 74 trillion sent every single year. That's 202 billion per day, 2 million per second, and all of them somehow end up in your mailbox. Next to email, you have WhatsApp, with 36 trillion WhatsApp messages per year. Then you've got 14 trillion WeChat messages, 7 trillion texts, 200 billion tweets, 109 billion Zoom calls, about 5 Yahoo Messenger calls and somehow, 17 million telegrams. Yes, you heard me right. The world still sends millions of telegrams every single year. There is a few questions like who, what, when, where, why, and how. Four of those are pretty easy to answer. Telegrams. Telegrams. The world and now. But the remaining two, who and why, are a little more complicated. To explain why such an old and outdated technology has managed to stick around while so many others like pages, dial-up modems in the iPhone 12 have all that disappeared. After many iterations working with experts, medical health professionals and the women themselves, I should say it was not an easy process at all, but we had a simple and beautiful design. For a dollar more than what the existing product was offered for, at three dollars, we were able to deliver, Janma, a clean birth kit in a purse. Janma, meaning, birth, contained a blood-absorbing sheet for the woman to give birth on, a surgical scalpel, a cord clam, a bar of soap, a pair of gloves and the first cloth to wipe the baby clean. All this came packaged in a beautiful purse that was given to the mother as a gift after all her hard work, that she carried home with pride as a symbol of prosperity. One woman reacted to this gift. She said, is this really mine? Can I keep it? The other one said, will you give me a different color when I have my next baby? Better yet, a woman expressed that this was the first purse that she had ever owned in her life. The kit, aside from its symbolism and its simplicity, is designed to follow globally recommended medical protocol and serves as a behavior change tool to follow steps one after the other. It can not only be used in homes, but also in institutional settings. Most of us know about an asteroid hitting the Earth and wiping out the dinosaurs, but most people don't know that the Earth nearly got devastated by a large igneous province that formed in Siberia 250 million years ago. Now, imagine that we had to deal with a colossal lip like that today. How much damage would it cause? Urban areas would be decimated by the rift, causing extensive destruction. And those quakes? They're just the preview. Next, the lava makes its grand entrance. Once here, it's on the warpath. Farmland needed for raising crops would be incinerated. Bodies of water like lakes, streams and rivers would be vaporized if there was enough lava. And depending on how fast the lava flows, endangered species would be wiped out if they couldn't relocate in time. It would also devastate the economy. 
schools, businesses and hospitals would be ravaged, along with infrastructure like highways, power-generating facilities, gas lines and water mains. And that beautiful new house you bought? It's covered in lava. Your new car? It's under lava. And what about you? Well, according to... Carbon dioxide, or Colorado II, is the main greenhouse gas in climate change. So how does CO2 get into our atmosphere? Well, carbon is part of a cycle. It starts with the sun, which heats the Earth's surface with more energy in one hour than the whole world uses in a year. Plants, which are kind of like biological chefs, take that sunlight, and then suck in some CO2 from the air, mix them together, and bam! They create a stored form of energy, in the form of carbohydrates such as glucose and sucrose. The process is called photosynthesis. When animals like us eat those plants our stomachs convert that food back into energy for our own growth. Greenhouse gases are a byproduct of this process, and are released through waste. If those plants die, they decompose, and tiny microorganisms break down those carbohydrates and again, release greenhouse gases as a byproduct. As you see, energy originates from the sun. It is then transferred as it moves through the food chain. But sometimes, carbon-based organisms like plants or animals get stuck in the earth. Well, according to the American Psychiatric Association, addiction is a complex condition of the brain where a person has compulsive substance use despite there being harmful consequences. People with addiction tend to have an intense focus on what they're addicted to, to the point where it takes over their life. What makes it so hard to break an addiction is that it can change the way your brain is wired, giving you harsh cravings that make it difficult to stop. Studies of brain imaging have even shown changes in areas of the brain that relate to judgment, decision-making, learning, memory and behavior control. So is this what's happening with Facebook and social media? It's hard to say for sure. That being said, we are starting to give more credit to an addiction that might be pretty similar, video games. That's because the American Psychiatric Association includes internet gaming disorders as disorders that requires further research, but that can result in clinically significant impairment or distress. The World Health Organization has also added gaming disorders to their international classification of diseases, which is used by medical practitioners around the world to diagnose conditions.